Alrighty then. I am redoing this. I did a video just the other day. I think it was yesterday. On an RPM sense loss. And it's one I'd never seen before. So what I did is I went to the unit. And I got the uh, run history and the alarm history. And it was working fine right up until it started getting the RPM sense loss. Up here it says the alarm, let's say RPM sense loss. And the evolution will actually give you an error code after that. But this is the Nexus and uh, it's an older model. Matter of fact, the evolution, I think they have the evolution 2.0. So many differences. But the generator I was working on went in in 2010. And uh, commonly the thing that goes wrong is the battery and the battery there had a 2021 battery in it. And I actually pulled it, load tested it, and it was wonderful. So that was good. And then uh, from that point on, it's pretty basic. Now this Nexus controller here is just like that unit. As a matter of fact, it's same year, same make, same model, blah, blah, blah. And it only failed in auto. It never failed. If you wanted to manually start it by taking it to off and then putting it in manual, it would start right up, but it would fail in auto. So I had the signal coming over to here. First day out, I saw the Bendex. That's that right there. That goes into here and spins the flywheel to get the generator engine to start. And, uh, it was forward, so I thought there was something wrong with the starter, but there wasn't. So I hooked it up like this, because in auto, with a good battery, and that the battery on this one is a die-hard gold, it's a 35-2. It has 640 cold cranking amps, and it fits. Generac uses the 26R because that physical size will fit in all the air-cooled models, and that simplifies the manual. But anyways, in auto, this controller will say, start, and it will take that battery signal, 12 volts, and bring it in on this blue wire. This one here is already ground, so that coil is energized, and it connects this and this, which is a much larger cable because the starter draws a lot of current. And what I noticed on uh, the unit that I was looking at is uh, I wasn't getting the signal here for, I don't know, I didn't even get to one Mississippi and the 12 volts was gone. So, and then I tried it in manual and it started right up. Well, when it starts right up, you know this is good. You know this is good. And uh, after that, the only thing that tells you your RPM, I think it's this one down here, but there's uh, like a proximity device and the flywheel has a bunch of flat teeth that that engages and uh, it spins it and the proximity device just looks at one spot and it watches the teeth go by and it counts and it knows what the RPM of the engine is. But that unit didn't even get that far. It didn't even spin the starter around. So that's one unit that I actually told them to call a certified technician because they have the manuals. You can hook a laptop up to it. Uh, I don't have that. I didn't do that because, uh, and they told me, they said, you have to come to Wisconsin and take the class. Well, I used to take classes and the, the first class used to cost money. And I'd fly to, uh, I think I was going to Ohio then. 
and it was introduction two. Then there was the next step, and even with Generac, I think there's five classes, and that's uh, like just for the air cooled. But because I never took them, I don't know. But uh, I'm self-taught. I've been an electrician, retired out some years ago. So all I did is I set this for, this is AC and DC current. And then I just select DC current and it'll record the DC current coming in. I usually tell it just to look for the inrush. And uh, the only time I got current on there is when I was in manual. This meter up here, I would set for DC voltage so I could read the 12 volts. And I only read that momentarily and I caught that out of the corner of my eye. I was looking at that. I got nothing. I seen this out of the corner of my eye. I saw that flash. And I'm like, man, this is weird. Never seen this one before. And this over here, These Apple phones are weird. These I didn't do. That's why they're in red. I said, somebody is starting that. A manual. And while I'm looking at this, I can actually see it in the face of the phone. If you look, these are all failures. And let me see. Oh, the date and the time, including the seconds. Well, it failed there, and then I went and looked at it, chased it for two exercise cycles, one on 9-11 and one on 9-18, and, and it worked fine. Then it went right back to RPM sense loss. So, like I said, I sent it on to uh, a certified guy. He can do the, let me see, the software is uh, version 1.08, the hardware is version 1.00. So he can do the updates, check and see what's failing. Uh, I've done logic controllers before and logic, temp, I've never seen it fail. So I figure there's something in the controller, maybe a set of contacts and they cost a lot of money. So I don't want to charge anybody to put one in. I want it found root cause and eliminate it so that's what I did when I was out there doing it I was almost all the way through it and uh, I felt something behind my left ear and uh, I almost yelled sniper and I said oh that's probably not a good thing to do so I said a couple expletives and uh because of that, I figured I couldn't post the film. So that's why I'm doing a reenactment instead. But uh, I don't know what got me. A murder hornet, a black face hornet, or white face hornet, whatever they call them. But it hurt. So I just wanted to show that. and Maybe people could get an understanding of the sequence of events. You have to have the battery. You have to have a start command. It has to connect 12 volts there so that the contactor will close and the start will get power. And it spins the engine. If it don't get that far, then you got something ahead of it. And I think that's all I have. So hopefully you can use that information if you need to. Oh, the other thing. On the batteries, I've always said I disconnect the negative terminal first because once it's connected, the whole machine is negative. Yeah, that's so I put my negative terminal for my DC voltage there to read that down there. And ooh. other than that, I think things are good.